anytime you take out the top leader of a terrorist organization, especially a global movement like Al Qaeda, it's significant. It forces leadership succession processes that are they they tend to affect group cohesion. A lot of the affiliates that Al Qaeda has worldwide now need to reassess if they want to pledge allegiance to the the new leader and be a part of the movement. Oftentimes, top leaders like Al Zawahiri, like even Al Baghdadi and Islamic State uh, top leaders. They're usually pretty displaced from the day-to-day operations of terrorist organizations. And so while they may be responsible for the general strategic planning of the organization and inciting attacks against the U.S. and other Western countries, you know, those that that direction continues. And a lot of the operations are not contingent on the top leader being alive or not. They, they tend to go on whether he's dead or alive. And so that day-to-day operational planning tends to go relatively unaffected. This is a this is a global movement that in many parts of the world is only expanding and growing. Uh, certainly, U.S. and Taliban relations, which were already tense, are going to be strained even more. The Taliban is going to need to respond to this. They've already issued a statement, but they do rely in large parts on U.S. Uh, assistance in country. And so already tense relationships are going to be strained even more. They might feel even more emboldened to support uh, the jihadist cause in the wake of uh, in the wake of a strike like this.